Ooh, what is going on, everyone? My name is Jamon McKinney, but of course, you can just call me Juice because that is my nickname. Welcome, everyone, to the latest edition of the Juice Alert. My name is Jamon McKinney. I am the founder of this show, and you can also check me out on MLBBro.com. Really, honestly, just any social media platform, you know, Instagram, you know, Twitter, you know, TikTok. If you type in MLB Bro, you will find the MLBBro.com's content creation page and you'll be able to find, you know, episodes that I put out. Well, really segments on MLBBro.com where me and many, many other talented young broadcasters and analysts, we cover African Americans in Major League Baseball. That was founded by Rob Parker. He is the guy that's behind all the nooks and crannies of that. So I'm going to put a link to MLBBro.com, you know, their Instagram page and their Twitter in the bio of this episode. So be sure to check out, you know, those things in the description of this episode. Also, follow me on social media. You know, you can find all of the latest things that I'm doing, all the latest takes and updates for this show on my social media for both the Juice Alert and me, of course, Jamon McKinney. Personally, I'll put these you know, social media platforms on the screen for you guys on YouTube to maybe screenshot, pause the episode and check out if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on podcasting platforms, just go to the link in, well, not the link, just go to the bio and you'll find the information for all of my social media platforms. Enough talking though. We are diving into the NFC South division today. We're talking the Panthers, the Buccaneers, the Falcons, and of course, the overrated and overhyped New Orleans Saints. I will get into why I believe the New Orleans Saints are overrated and overhyped a little bit later in this episode, but I want to first start off by talking about Tom Brady. I know Tom Brady isn't necessarily associated with the AFC South just because he mostly played for the New England Patriots and they play in the AFC East. I have not gotten all of my AFC East thoughts together quite yet. So I'm going to wait a couple of weeks before I start putting out opinions and bold claims about that division. So today we're rolling with the NFC South and Tom Brady, of course, won the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a Super Bowl at one point. So let's talk some Tom Brady. Oh man, is Tom Brady the greatest athlete to ever live. Is he the GOAT athlete? To me, I'm going to personally say no. I believe Michael Jordan is still to this day the greatest athlete of all time if you combine someone's athletic ability and their accomplishments within their respective sport. I believe he beat out Tom Brady and virtually everyone that has lived that has ever played a sport. However, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to make both the case for Tom Brady being the greatest athlete of all time and also make the case against Tom Brady being the greatest athlete of all time. So the case for Tom Brady being the greatest athlete to ever live, Tom Brady is the most accomplished player in NFL history. If you combine longevity and peak level performances in the biggest moments is Tom Brady and everyone else. Joe Montana did not play long enough, and the same with Lawrence Taylor. The only NFL football player that even comes close to Tom Brady's longevity and accomplishments to me is Jerry Rice. And it's, and football is the ultimate team sport, and as good as Jerry Rice, Ru- Rice was, Tom Brady to me, ranks just a little bit higher probably because being the NFL starting quarterback is all about bringing people together, all 53 players on a 53-man roster. Tom Brady in the ultimate team sport was the ultimate team guy. Tom Brady is maybe the best ever at just bringing people together to compete and try to win Super Bowls. We saw him do it in New England, even as a young guy. We saw it in Tampa Bay with the Buccaneers during that one year in which the Buccaneers went all in, and he won a Super Bowl going through the likes of Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, and Patrick Mahomes on his way to winning a Super Bowl. Those are three top 10 quarterbacks of all time, and Tom Brady found a way to get through all of them leading his team. And 
when it comes to Tom Brady, I believe the road to prosperity for him needs to be taken into account when we're having these conversations. Tom Brady is not as talented as Aaron Rodgers or Peyton Manning. But I actually think this, oddly enough, works in Tom Brady's favor because despite Tom Brady's physical limitations, Tom Brady was able to accomplish more than the likes of Peyton Manning and virtually any NFL player ever. Because when it comes to a, being a great athlete, it's not just about your physical tools. It's also about your heart, your drive, your competitive spirit, your intensity, your commitment to excellence, you being a great team player. Tom Brady embodies all of that. He was the 199th pick of his draft. He was doubted in Michigan. He did not start immediately in the NFL. But when Tom Brady got his one opportunity, He was ready, and he never looked back. And Tom Brady lasted from age 23 into the NFL to age 45. Tom Brady was still an above-average quarterback his final season in the NFL, even at age 45. His second-to-last season in the NFL, he was second in MVP voting behind Aaron Rodgers. The fact that Tom Brady is nearly winning MVPs at age 44, that's incredible. So I think that when it comes to Tom Brady, most accomplished player ever, maybe in his respective sport, his longevity, his peak level performances, his road to prosperity, the way people look up to him, the fact that he was doubted, all those things you should take into account when evaluating if Tom Brady is the greatest athlete to ever live. That's the case for Tom Brady. The case against Tom Brady not being the greatest athlete of all time is, here's the thing, people. At some point, the physical tools and the physical attributes that you bring to the table as an athlete, that has to matter. Tom Brady is a great story because he was able to be successful for so long in the NFL despite his physical limitations. He got the absolute most out of himself and his NFL career. But at Tom Brady's peak, can we truly argue that he was a more physically imposing football player than the likes of Jerry Rice or Lawrence Taylor? Was he more talented than them? Probably not. No, I would say no. Is he more talented than Joe Montana? You know, I think there's a debate to be had. I think they're about even. Was he more talented than Aaron Rodgers? I would say no. Was he more talented than Peyton Manning? I would say no. See, the thing about Michael Jordan is one of the reasons why I believe he's the greatest athlete of all time is because he's one of the most accomplished athletes at his respective sport ever, but he's arguably the most talented basketball player ever, and he's a super talented athlete, point blank, period. In terms of just athletic ability, Tom Brady ranks very, 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 very low. And a lot of guys that were great athletes that accomplished a lot, they played multiple sports. Michael Jordan played multiple sports, played baseball at one point. Deion Sanders played Major League Baseball at one point, I think, hit a home run and then scored a touchdown in the same week. Bo Jackson played multiple sports, was great at both of them. Usain Bolt, you know, he didn't play multiple sports. Well, he probably did growing up, but Usain Bolt is the fastest human being ever. Tom Brady can't even outrun the likes of Josh Rosen, probably. When you think of the word athlete, you think of big, fast, strong guys that are flying through the air. Tom Brady, unfortunately, does not check any of those boxes. I think Tom Brady was an underrated athlete because he did get drafted by the Montreal Expos in the 18th round of the 1995 MLB draft, but... That's not enough for me. And last but not least, there's one blemish regarding Tom Brady that no one talks about. The Patriots were accused of cheating. And you can say what you want about that, but that helps Tom Brady if the cheating was indeed legit. That has to be something that we talk about. A lot of people don't want to talk about it, but I'm here to talk about it. And I think that if you're going to make the case for Tom Brady being the greatest athlete of all time, then... That has to kind of ding him a little bit. Did Michael Jordan ever cheat? No. Did Lawrence Taylor ever cheat? No. Did Tom? Did Jerry Rice ever cheat? No. You know, did Michael Phelps ever cheat? No. So 
That has to be taken into account. The bottom line is Tom Brady, all-time great football player, but that is the case against Tom Brady being the greatest athlete of all time. So there you go. Tom Brady, ultimately, I think that he's definitely probably one of the 10 greatest athletes of all time if you take into account peak performance. And I do, like I said, I think Tom Brady, if you were to say who has the most underrated arm in NFL history, I gotta say it's Brady because that was an accurate arm right there. It was a very good arm. You know, he was, he had a strong arm in his prime, but yeah, those are my overall thoughts. I think Tom Brady, I think that's a very fair conversation and argument regarding if Tom Brady is the greatest athlete of all time from both sides. So you're welcome. All right. I want to now move on to Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers. So Bryce Young, 2023, first round draft pick to the Carolina Panthers, first overall pick in the draft. The Panthers have now completely hit, hit the reset button, new coaching staff, hopefully a star quarterback in Bryce Young. And look, I've said it before. I'm going to continue to preach it because a lot of people can't understand this. Most quarterbacks will only perform as good as the parts around them. Keep in mind, Matthew Stafford was what some people thought was a generational arm talent coming out of Georgia. And he had a losing record in Detroit. And the minute Matthew Stafford left the dysfunctional, unorganized mess that was the Detroit Lions at times, Matthew Stafford immediately won a Super Bowl. That should tell you all you need to know. I like what the Panthers have. However, there is some big questions still that need to be answered, but I don't want to talk about those things. I want to talk about Bryce Young specifically. What are the pros and cons of Bryce Young's game? Let's talk about it. What worries me? What are the cons of Bryce Young? First of all, it's pretty obvious. His size, he's tiny. And everyone talks about, oh, what about Drew Brees? What about Russell Wilson? What about Kyler Murray? What about Baker Mayfield? For all the guys that are short quarterbacks that have had success in the NFL, and those guys have definitely had success, some more than others, what we don't talk about is how many quarterbacks do not succeed because they lack the requisite size to be an NFL starting quarterback. Listen, people, we can talk about, oh, you got to try hard in sports. If you work hard, you're going to make it, Johnny. Uh, Johnny, I'm, I'm sorry to break it to you, but in order to make it in Major League Baseball, you have to be able to hit a 95-mile-per-hour fastball. That's like the bare minimum. You just have to do it. Okay, if you can't hit a 95-mile-per-hour fastball in Major League Baseball, I've got no room for you probably as a scout or GM. That's just the reality. And usually as an NFL quarterback, they come in all shapes and sizes. But for the most part, a lot of NFL quarterbacks are a lot bigger and taller than six foot ten. I'm sorry, five foot ten, pardon me. And when it comes to Bryce Young, he could be overwhelmed because of his lack of size. Okay. You know, and I do have durability concerns regarding Bryce Young. And because Bryce Young is on the smaller side of things regarding his size, he is going to have to really work on getting in the film room and being a step ahead of the defense. He virtually has to be more perfect than a guy like Lamar Jackson, where Lamar Jackson, you know, he's this big athlete, can run around and make plays, and he doesn't have to study as much film as Bryce Young because he's just such a special athlete. You know, Josh Allen, Josh Allen doesn't have to be perfect with his mechanics because his arm is so strong, and he's such a big imposing physical specimen at the position. Ben Rollsberger for years didn't work out, you know, in the off season by some reports. You know, some people said he kind of mailed it in and just played golf and drank beer. And it worked fine for Ben Rollsberger because he could get away with that. Bryce Young has to be an exception. And sometimes trying to be an exception, it's hard, okay? And listen, like I said, he's got to really dive into that playbook because he doesn't have the get out of jail free cards that Rodgers and Mahomes has. He's a very creative passer, and we'll get into that. But I think you get my point. You know, I do have concerns about his potential durability because he's a smaller body. And if he's getting hit a lot, I have a lot of concerns about how his body will be able to hold up in the NFL. Now, the pros of Bryce Young, he's a very creative passer. And what do I mean by that? Bryce Young, he's a guy that can scramble around and just make things happen. His pocket presence is really, really good. He's a very self-aware player. He knows his limitations because the thing about Bryce Young is 
He's been small his entire life playing quarterback. Like, this is nothing new for Bryce Young. He knows his physical limitations. And Bryce Young's football IQ, from all the things that I've observed, is pretty good. It passes the test. It seems like Bryce Young in college, was always a step ahead of the defense. And that's very key. That's something you like to see. And we talk about the injury concerns. Look, I do believe those things are are real, okay? But Bryce Young at times gets the ball out of his hands so quickly that, like I said, he's just ahead of the defense, and he's a very self-aware player. He does not consistently put his body in harm's way. He knows he's not Ben Roethlisberger. He knows he's not Cam Newton. He knows he's not Josh Allen where he's going to live to fight another day if need be. He's going to slide. He's going to try to avoid those hits. He's going to get the ball out of his hands very quickly if it all pans out. And if you're not getting hit a lot, then it doesn't really matter about the injury concerns, in my opinion, because, like I said, if you can avoid the big hits, I feel much, much more better about Bryce Young. Very similar to the likes of Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson, Bryce Young knows how to protect himself. Now, obviously, you're taking a gamble. With drafting Bryce Young because of his size, you know, where to where injuries could pop up. But if Bryce Young is a hit when he's on the field, this is a guy that has a chance to really change your NFL franchise, at least for the time being, for a small window. Let's play the safe side because I'm not the type of person that comes on here and says, Oh yeah, this guy, you're gonna have a 20 year, 20 year NFL career, gonna crush it. I like to see guys kind of play their career out. However, there are exceptions, I will say. But again, when you look at Bryce Young, his final year at Alabama, even the talent on the field wasn't as good in years past. And Alabama was still winning games because Bryce Young, when he's at his best, he's an awesome quarterback. And I think he has a chance to really succeed in the NFL if he really, you know, gets the pieces around him. And just, you know, from whatever, from what you hear from the Panthers organization, you know, whether it be coaches at Alabama, again, they'll probably talk about regardless, but you just get the sense that Bryce Young is going to do everything in his power to be a great leader, to really put in the time in the film room. I get grown up vibes from Bryce Young. I got party man vibes from a guy like Johnny Menzel. So again, these are the pros and cons of Bryce Young. I'm excited to see what he can be in the NFL. You know, what is his ceiling? Potentially a top 10 quarterback. If he really hits, I think he could potentially be a top 10 quarterback. If he is a bust, it's just going to be one of those things where he's overwhelmed by the speed and size of NFL defenses, can't make the adjustments, can't ever stay healthy. And for whatever reason, the talent just maybe isn't as eye popping as we're willing to make it out to be. But I'm willing to give Bryce Young a chance. I do not condone the Panthers were drafting him. I was a big CJ Stroud fan, but to me, the grades were very similar between the two players as far as Bryce Young and CJ Stroud was concerned. So yeah, for that reason, I'm excited to see what Bryce Young does for the Carolina Panthers. And dare I say, could he be the greatest Panthers quarterback ever, maybe ahead of Cam Newton? I'm going to pause on that for now, just because Cam Newton to me, was a generational talent, you know, was a grown man in college. To me, he had more physical tools than Bryce Young. But the thing is, Cam Newton never seemed to really iron out his weaknesses. If Bryce Young can be a guy that hones in and improves on his weaknesses as time goes on, I think he can give Cam Newton at least a run for his money. That's how I feel. So when it comes to the NFC South, I want to talk about a guy that played in that division for a long time, Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, longtime Falcons quarterback, one of the greatest players in the history of the Falcons franchise. When you think of greatest Atlanta Falcons of all time, you think of Michael Vick, Julio Jones, Deion Sanders. Matt Ryan is in the conversation for greatest Falcons player of all time based on what he did. However, I have some opinions about Matt Ryan A lot of people believe, oh, Matt Ryan, Hall of Fame level player. I disagree, folks. The reality is this. I'm here to tell the truth. Matt Ryan is the most overrated quarterback of all time, in my opinion. And it's not even up for debate. Matt Ryan is not a Hall of Famer. Compared to his temporaries at the quarterback position, I'm not even sure Matt Ryan is a top 10 quarterback of his era. Let's go through, let's go through the names. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, 
Ben Rollinsberger, Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, Phillip Rivers, Matthew Stafford, and Eli Manning are all better quarterbacks at their best than Matt Ryan. And I haven't even talked about the likes of Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, two guys that are physical specimens and two of the most talented quarterbacks to ever live. I listed off over 10 guys right there for you. Matt Ryan is not a top 10 quarterback of his era. And I know what you're going to say. Oh, you know, how can you say Matt Ryan is worse than Cam Newton and Phillip Rivers and Matthew Stafford? Let's talk about those guys because those guys will probably be the most debated. Cam Newton at his best was a better quarterback than Matt Ryan. He may have not had as long of a prime as Matt Ryan, but to me, at Cam Newton's peak, he led a 15-1 Panthers team. He's arguably in the conversation for greatest rushing quarterback of all time. He had a much more talented arm. He carried much lesser pieces than Matt Ryan. Cam Newton is better. Phillip Rivers went to eight Pro Bowls at one point. Matt Ryan's only been to four. Phillip Rivers is a better quarterback. I've seen it with my own two, two eyes, people. Matthew Stafford, much more talented arm than Matt Ryan, and he won a Super Bowl. That's the difference, people, right there. When it comes to the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame is reserved for the most talented players ever and the most accomplished players ever in the NFL. Matt Ryan in 15 seasons, what do we have? Obviously a very solid body of work and very good statistics, but we also have nine years in which he missed the playoffs. Only four Pro Bowl appearances. Only one All-Pro selection. We can highlight that MVP season that he had, but to me, that year Aaron Rodgers should have won the NFL MVP. Aaron Rodgers led the NFL in touchdown passes that year. Not Matt Ryan. And Aaron Rodgers had to carry the 32nd ranked defense in the entire NFL. And he won 10 games with that unit and led the NFL in touchdown passes. Matt Ryan only won 11 games during the regular season. So was the win-loss record really that much in Matt Ryan's favor to where we had to give him an MVP of Aaron Rod- over Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers was robbed of MVP in favor of Matt Ryan. And Matt Ryan, there's no, there's no other way around it. He holds the biggest choke job in Super Bowl history. That came at his, at his feet. A 28 to three lead was blown on Matt Ryan's watch when he was the quarterback. He had a terrible fumble in the second half that led to an easy, easy Patriots touchdown. He was not moving the ball in the second half of that game. He holds responsibility for this. Sure, the defense holds some responsibility. Sure, the coaching staff holds some responsibility. But guess what, people? If anyone not named Matt Ryan probably would have blown that lead, they would be getting crushed. If Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, or Tom Brady blew a 25-point lead in the Super Bowl, you know and I know the media would crush them. But because it's Matt Ryan, it's okay. He gets a participation trophy. He gets to be clapped at, okay? And that just goes to show you right there. I got y'all. That's the difference. The difference is Brady, Rodgers, and Mahomes, these Hall of Fame level quarterbacks, they're held to a higher standard than Matt Ryan. A la why Matt Ryan is overrated and not a Hall of Famer. Because when you say someone's overrated, that means you're over-exaggerating their greatness in a sense. Matt Ryan is not a Hall of Fame player. He wasn't a top 10 quarterback of his era. Okay, he just wasn't. And a lot of people believe he was. And it's not, it's flatly not true. You mean to tell me someone is a Hall of Fame level player that owns the biggest choke job in NFL postseason history, has a below 500 playoff record, missed the playoffs nine times in 15 years altogether, only made four Pro Bowls in 15 years only had one all-pro selection. And again, we already talked about his overrated MVP season, probably the most overrated MVP award ever given out, it's at least in that conversation. Aaron Rodgers should have won that MVP and not even arguably a top 10 quarterback of his era, at least from a towel perspective, not even close. How So many times in the playoffs, we have seen Matt Ryan, who a lot of people call Matty Ice, turn into Matt Ryan melts like ice when it matters most in the playoffs. Blowing a 17-point lead to Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers. Scoring zero points on offense versus the New York Giants. Not very good. 
Couldn't close the deal versus Nick Foles and the Philadelphia Eagles when he had a chance to win the game in the red zone. Got his brains blown out by an Aaron Rodgers-led Packers team when he was the favorite at home, and that was a young Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers hadn't quite even hit his prime yet. So to me, I got to say, when I consider the most overrated quarterbacks of all time, I got to say Matt Ryan's atop that list for all the reasons that I mentioned. Matt Ryan has been overrated by so many people. He's not a great playoff performer. I don't care about the statistics because statistics are misleading. If we want to just go off of stats, then let's just put Kirk Cousins and Dak Prescott in the Hall of Fame. They're not even close to the Hall of Fame. You know it and I know it. And Matt Ryan, he had a very good career. And if he would have won that Super Bowl, then I would consider potentially putting him in the Hall of Fame. But the thing is, that's the difference, people. We can't just give out participation trophies. I'm not going to do it. With, I'm not going to do it with Matt Ryan. He's by far and away the most overrated quarterback of all time and one of the most overrated players in NFL history. So I just crushed Matt Ryan. I know a lot of you probably have logged off and canceled me already. It's fine. It's fine. I've had people take shots at me regarding Matt Ryan. Falcons fans are very sensitive people. I've had Falcons fans attack me on social media and I've asked them to debate me on my own platform. They come running away from that, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I talked about how Matt Ryan is overrated. However, I do believe Matt Ryan's overall body of work is underappreciated. There's a difference between someone being overrated by the media and just overall having their work be underappreciated. Okay, I believe two both things can be true. Let's keep in mind, Matt Ryan was the third overall pick of his draft. He lived up to expectations. Multiple Pro Bowls, won an MVP, and got to a Super Bowl. And at one point, was a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Now, again, I mentioned how he wasn't, at least in my eyes, a top 10 quarterback of his era, because I believe there are at least 10 to 12 guys that had better careers than him while he was playing, okay? But within those seasons, Matt Ryan definitely at some point ranked as a top 10 quarterback. I mean, he won a league MVP. Even Even though I think Aaron Rodgers definitely should have won that MVP award over him, Matt Ryan at least was in that conversation. You're not... You're, you're, you're a top 10 quarterback if you want an MVP before, okay? At least within the NFL, within the season. And keep in mind, keep in mind, there have been some bad top five picks in the past at quarterback. Sam Darnold, you know, oh man, it's been rough for him. Jamarcus Russell, Ryan Leaf, you know, and let's think about some of these teams right here. Teams like Washington, Miami, Chicago, Tennessee. These teams would kill to have a quarterback like Matt, like Matt Ryan for at least 10 to 15 years. When I think of Matt Ryan, I think of a natural, good, down-the-field thrower of the football, a guy that had very nice touch, a very solid deep ball thrower, never missed games, was stable, dependable, a grown-up, always took ownership for his losses, even sometimes when they weren't on him, never complained, a good family guy, loved the city of Atlanta, and he got real close to winning a Super Bowl. Unfortunately, just some people's story is just not meant to include a Super Bowl. It's the harsh reality, but it's true, you know? And Matt Ryan, look, I'm not going to say he's Hall of Fame worthy because that's giving him a participation trophy. But I will say, I do think Matt Ryan's career is underappreciated. I'd love to one day have a sit-down conversation with Matt Ryan, you know, really get some perspective on his football career because he's had a darn good football career. You know, just because I don't think he's a Hall of Fame level player doesn't mean I think Matt Ryan is hot garbage. Okay, Matt Ryan, to me at least, was underappreciated in Atlanta. And I think that his career, you know, Sometimes it deserves a little bit more shine than we're willing to give it credit for because he lived up to expectations. You know, there's been so many, you know, Ryan Leafs and Jamarcus Russells in the past that it's been crazy. And guys like Matt Ryan who have hit and who have lived up to expectations, they should be appreciated. And tip of the cap to Matt Ryan because his career probably is over. He's probably going to hang it up very soon. But yeah, that's how I feel about Matt Ryan. So... I have a feeling the Falcons could make it into the playoffs in 2023. I like their wide receivers. I think Kyle Pitts has a lot of potential. Their offensive line is rock solid. They've spent money on their defense to improve it. I like some of the players on their defense. The Falcons really have a chance to put themselves back on the map. Truly, what it all comes down to is Desmond Ritter 
as their starting quarterback. Desmond Ritter has been quickly put on the hot seat. What do I mean by that? First of all, Desmond Ritter was the 74th pick of the 2022 NFL Draft. He was not a first-round selection. So what does that mean? If you weren't a first-round selection, that means teams, for the most part, they're willing to give up on you a lot more quickly. Guys that are first-round picks get multiple opportunities, you know, even if they fail. Look at a guy like Josh Rosen. Look at how many opportunities he got. If Josh Rosen was a fifth-round pick, he would have been out of the NFL a long time ago, okay? I think he's out of the NFL right now, but you get my point. Okay, so the Falcons saw he was there in the first round. They didn't select him. They saw he was there in the second round. They didn't select him. And finally, in the third round, they decided to take a chance on him. So from a draft capital perspective, the Falcons haven't been all that invested in Desmond Ritter. They kind of just said, hey, he's the best left available, and we're going to take him. That's from my perspective of what I'm looking at, okay? And let's be real. This roster, for the most part, is ready to win right now. I think Arthur Smith is one of the most underrated coaches in all of football. He is winning games with some makeshift rosters out there. Now the Falcons have added talent, okay? They have put pieces around Desmond Ritter for him to be successful. He wasn't asked to start a ton his rookie year. He did get some experience his rookie season. And this NFL offseason, the Falcons, for the most part, they went about as all in as they could. No more excuses. Not saying Desmond Ritter has to be a dominant quarterback. I'm not saying he has to go out there and look like an MVP. But if Desmond Ritter can't look the part and win games in this situation, that tells me all I need to know. That will just tell me he can't hang in the NFL. Because if you can't hang in the NFL with a star running back, a star tight end, very good wide receivers, a good offensive line, and a good coaching staff, and improved defense, do I really have room for you? That's all I need to say. And let's not let's not forget, Desmond Ritter comes from the University of Cincinnati, where he had 50 college starts. He should be well-seasoned. There's a reason why Justin Herbert is so good. You want to know why? Obviously because of his talent, but because Justin Herbert also started a bunch of games in college. He went back for his fourth year at Oregon. So, the pressure's on Desmond Ritter. It is time for him to go out there, have a good, solid season, win games, and help try to lead the Falcons to a playoff appearance. I think Desmond Ritter is quickly on the hot seat, and I think that that is a fair expectation to have regarding him, you know, and we'll see what he can do. I'm excited to see. But, like I said, only time will tell. All right, everyone, I'm going to take a short, short break. When I return, I will get into more NFC South topics, and I will start by talking about the one and only Baker Mayfield, okay? All right, I am back, and I want to talk some Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and mainly, I want to talk about Baker Mayfield. So, Baker Mayfield, former first overall pick of the NFL draft, you know, he got drafted to the Browns. I've always been more of a Baker Mayfield fan than most people. Some people think that he's a bust, and I just disagree with those people. I think a bust is someone that has absolutely proven nothing in the NFL, someone that's not capable of being a starting quarterback. Whether you think Baker Mayfield is worth a long-term deal or not, you can at least admit that he's shown the capability, at least in the past, to be a good starting quarterback. I mean, he won a playoff game in Cleveland at one point, okay? The first playoff game, they ain't wanted forever, and Baker Mayfield played well in that game. Outplayed Ben Roethlisberger, a Hall of Fame quarterback. And I was on the side of saying, okay, I totally understand why the Browns chose Deshaun Watson over Baker Mayfield because Deshaun Watson's a darn good football player when he's healthy. Baker Mayfield, as good as he is when he's at his best, he's not Deshaun Watson, not even close in my opinion. So, look, they, they said, okay, you know, we drafted Baker. He had some success, and we feel we can upgrade, and we're going to take a chance. And Baker was unfortunately left to, you know, be to the side. And, you know, he obviously, you know, got some time with the Panthers. He played a game. He played, he, he started a couple games for the Rams. Now he's with the Buccaneers. Okay. But let me just say this, even though I'm a big Baker Mayfield fan and higher on him than most people, I do believe Baker's accurate. He has a strong arm. He's a, he's mobile enough. I like his intangibles, but even the biggest Baker Mayfield fans have to admit this. Baker Mayfield's time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, may very well be 
Baker Mayfield's last chance to prove he deserves the privilege of being a starting quarterback in the NFL. Being a starting quarterback in the NFL is a privilege that you earn day by day. It's it's look at Aaron Rodgers, people. Aaron Rodgers has one of the best resumes for a quarterback of all time. Had one bad season. Green Bay kicked him to the curb, okay? Has Baker Mayfield proven he can hang in the NFL? Yes, he has. The problem is you got to update your resume year after year. And Baker Mayfield, you know, has not done that. Again, keep in mind, Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, one down year, and they bailed. They bailed on Aaron Rodgers, a Hall of Fame level quarterback, maybe the most talented thrower of the football we've ever seen. So if Aaron Rodgers isn't safe, you darn sure know Baker Mayfield ain't safe. So let's look at Baker Mayfield's career so far. The first three seasons of Baker Mayfield's career, 75 touchdown passes, 43 interceptions. The interception numbers are a little bit high, but at least the touchdown production was there. Since 2021, so the last three years of Baker Mayfield's career, it's been 27 touchdowns to 21 interceptions. So Baker Mayfield essentially, you know, he's turned into Jameis Winston almost essentially. You know, he's not you know, throwing as many touchdowns and the interceptions are still very high. Baker Mayfield has not taken his game to the next level. Baker Mayfield, as far as I'm concerned, he's on a downward trajectory. I can no longer defend Baker anymore. He's on a downward trajectory. Okay. Maybe it's his shoulder that's been injured. You know, he's a little bit banged up. Maybe he's peaked as a player. I don't know. That's the bottom line. And regardless of what you want to say, Baker Mayfield's on his fourth team in a six year period. At some point, you got to start performing and being more consistent, Baker. And many people are now hyping up a guy named Caleb Williams, who is another former Oklahoma quarterback like Baker Mayfield. Caleb Williams now currently plays for USC. A lot of people think that he's potentially a generational prospect at the quarterback position. And a lot of people believe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to have a bottom five record this season because they don't believe in the pieces around Baker Mayfield, and they're probably bailing on Baker too. They may not bring Baker Mayfield back if Baker, you know, cannot lead them to a good amount of victories this season. And let's be real, people, if Baker Mayfield hits the market again, what truly is the market for Baker Mayfield? Is a team going to go all out, go all out to make Baker Mayfield happy and offer him a big time contract? Probably not. They would probably much rather start over with a rookie quarterback or a rookie deal that they, you know, kind of have an unknown for. We kind of know what Baker probably is. At this point, now again, I'm not ruling Baker out. I do think Baker Mayfield has the talent to prove that he's a starting quarterback once again. You know, the Buccaneers have some good wide receivers. The offensive line should be more healthy this year. The running backs and the defense are just okay, but they're still not bad. If Baker Mayfield legitimately is an NFL starting quarterback, he will look the part this year. Maybe he won't win games, but all Baker needs to do, if he wants to be safe in Tampa Bay, he needs to prove to this coaching staff he can be consistent, and in some spots, he can look the part and elevate the troops around him. However, I will say, I have questions about the coaching staff, and, you know, Tom Brady even struggled this past year, and no offense to Baker Mayfield, but he's not Tom Brady. So, it's a very interesting situation for, for Baker Mayfield. I am rooting for Baker. I think he can succeed, but again, this is a situation where I have some major questions about the coaching staff. The roster is kind of aging, and There's a lot of pressure on Baker Mayfield to make things work. We'll see what he can do with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, his fourth team in six years. I'm rooting for you, Baker, but like I said, we'll see what happens. So I have a firm belief that in 2023, the NFC South is not a very good division. But I will say this, just because it's a bad division That does not mean the division won't be competitive. I believe these teams are going to beat up on each other and just compete for who's going to get that final playoff spot in the NFC because, like, like for example, this is the worst division in that conference, you know. And I will say, like I said, the Panthers, the Falcons, the Buccaneers, the Saints, all these teams should be coming into the season thinking we're talented enough to win this division because I think that you can make the argument for all four teams. However, I will say this. There's been a lot of people that have been hyping up the New Orleans Saints in 2023. A lot of people have been saying, man, look at the Saints. They're going to run away with this division. The Saints can win the NFC, bruh. I've heard some people say that. And to me, 
It's been mind boggling. I don't understand the hype surrounding the New Orleans Saints as currently constructed with Dennis Allen being your head coach and Derek Carr being your quarterback. The New Orleans Saints will not sniff a Super Bowl appearance. They're not even close to being a Super Bowl contender. They're not even close. They're not, I, I will not even be shocked if the Saints miss the playoffs this season. And really the Saints, they have not been the same since Drew Brees retired. And that's understandable because Drew Brees is a top 10 quarterback of all time. You know, one of the great people in the NFL and one of the all time great passers, you know, and sometimes it takes a while for a franchise to reboot. But Saints fans, I have to ask you this. What is so special about Dennis Allen? Like what makes this guy so special? In 53 games coached in the NFL, Dennis Allen has won only 28% of his games. And you can't make excuses because I've seen Kyle Shanahan win games with with back of quarterbacks at times. Mike Tomlin was above 500, around 500 with back of quarterbacks at times. Never had a losing season. Mike Vrabel found a way to have a winning record with Ryan Tannehill, Malik Willis, and a bunch of, you know, quarterbacks this past year. So you can't tell me that, oh, you know, I got to give Dennis Allen a pass because he hasn't had the pieces around him. Listen, if you're a great head coach, you're going to win more than 28% of your games in a 50-plus game sample size. It doesn't work that way. You mean to tell me a great coach is winning 28% of his games in a 50-plus game sample size? That does not work. And Derek Carr, the ultimate piece to this puzzle. There's a reason the Raiders moved on from Derek Carr. There's a reason. He's been banged up in the past. Ever since his 2016 season, he has not been the same player. There's been some great moments, but we all know there's a ceiling with Derek Carr. He makes some very questionable, terrible decisions at times with the football. It's a very reckless and frustrating style of play that he plays and leans into. And sometimes when Derek Carr is getting hit, he doesn't like to throw the football down the field. He's not been the same since he got injured in 2016. Not to mention Alvin Kamara's on the decline. He's not the same running back that he was a couple of years ago where he, where he could essentially carry the entire workload of an offense. He's not that guy anymore. Michael Thomas can never stay healthy. The offensive line, it's a makeshift offensive line. I have a lot of questions about this offensive line. It's not the same as it was several years ago in New Orleans where they were arguably maybe the best team up front. The defense is good. But it's not an elite unit. You know, I can name about five to seven defenses. I would definitely rather have than the Saints defense right now today, probably even more. And again, even if this team wins their division by default, like I said, this team is not going to compete for a Super Bowl. I do not see it with the New Orleans Saints. I think that they're lacking stability at quarterback. They have not gotten it right since Drew Brees has retired. This roster is not very good. This coaching staff is not very good. And the New Orleans Saints, at some point, they will need to look themselves in the mirror and they will need to start to hit the reset button and the rebuilding button because they have spent their money very, very aggressively. And at some point, your credit card will come due pay at some point in New Orleans. So again, that's how I feel. But, you know, who knows? Anything can happen. So I want to make this claim right here that I think should be obvious, but it's not. Kyle Pitts is an elite tight end. The tape and the eye test has to matter. This is a guy that has elite speed for being a tight end. Elite size, okay? He has the ability to win 50-50 balls. He checks all those boxes. There's a reason why he was the fourth overall pick in his draft class by the Atlanta Falcons because the Falcons saw the same thing I saw on tape. A big, strong, fast, capable tight end that can be a game changer in the NFL. Kyle Pitts simply is in a situation where he's at a bad quarterback and he's been in a system that has not taken the time to find out how they, how they can get the absolute most out of his abilities. Imagine if Kyle Pitts played for the Kansas City Chiefs. You mean to tell me Patrick Mahomes can't get the most out of this guy? What if he was with the New York Jets with Aaron Rodgers? I think he would crush it. What if he was in Buffalo with Josh Allen or in Cincinnati with Joe Burrow? You're getting my point. Stop crucifying players for being in bad situations. I hope the Atlanta Falcons can make things work with Kyle Pitts because he's a generational talent. And if Kyle Pitts were to ever get traded away from the Falcons, as long as he stays healthy or if he moves on from the Falcons, 
he's going to crush it somewhere else. I guarantee you. So if I'm the Atlanta Falcons, I would lean into finding that franchise quarterback and trying to find out how we can get the most out of Kyle Pitts. Because I think Kyle Pitts has a chance to go down as one of the greatest tight ends of all time if he's put in a proper position to succeed. We'll see what happens, but that's how I ultimately feel about Kyle Pitts. Generational talent, and I think that he's been underutilized so far in Atlanta. We'll see how the rest of his career turns out. Last but not least, one more Falcons topic. I want to talk about B. John Robinson. B. John Robinson, as long as he stays healthy, he's going to be an elite running back in the National Football League. The Falcons landed a special football player. He was a first-round pick for a reason. And now I get it. I get it. Quarterback's more important. Left tackle's more important. Edge rusher's more important. Wide receiver's more important. I get it. But let's be real, people. In the past, we've seen first-round picks like Josh Jacobs, Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey. I felt Derrick Henry was vastly underrated in his draft class. He should have been a first-round pick. All these guys that we have touted as these high-level running backs in college for the most part, seven to eight times out of ten, a lot of these guys pan out, you know? And as long as B. John Robinson lives up to the hype and is one of those types of players, I don't knock the Falcons for drafting him in the first round. I get it. Most running backs are interchangeable and are probably only as good as the offensive line that you put in front of them. However, what makes Saquon Barkley so great what makes Derrick Henry so great, what makes Adrian Peterson from his prime so great is that they elevate the pieces around them. They elevate their quarterback. They elevate their offensive line. They elevate their coaching staff because if you put the ball in their hands, they're going to make something happen. They're going to break tackles. They're going to catch passes. They're going to make game-changing plays with their speed. And that's the type of player I believe B. John Robinson can be. And you're probably going to say, oh, Jamon, well, the Giants haven't really won anything with Saquon Barkley. The Titans haven't really won anything with Derrick Henry. First of all, Derrick Henry almost carried the Tennessee Titans to a Super Bowl at one point. And that was Ryan Tannehill being his quarterback. Saquon Barkley has had Daniel Jones and a washed up Eli Manning to work with. Okay. If you put these guys in a great situation and on a great team, are they, are they going to make that team worse? I beg to, I beg to differ. I mean, Marshawn Lynch, you know, did he make the Seattle Seahawks worse when he helped lead them to a Super Bowl? I would say no. B. John Robinson has all the talent in the world. Great speed, great vision, great strength. He catches the ball very well. You know, he's going to be a Pro Bowl type player for the Falcons and for any team he goes to in the future if he stays healthy. I believe in B. John Robinson. You know, he's one of those rare players that will be an elite running back. And when his payday comes, it'll be well worth whatever team that spends the money on him. It all just comes down to one thing, I think. Is the wear and tear on B. John Robinson way too much? Because he did get utilized a lot at Texas. So it's going to be very interesting to see how long his prime is and how healthy he will stay. But I do believe in the talent that is B. John Robinson. He'll be one of the best players in the entire NFL very, very soon down the road. All right, people. Pretty much all I have today. Thank you so, so much for tuning in today. My name is Jamon McKinney. Be sure to stay tuned for more great episodes from me personally. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen.